welcome to this youtube channel once again for new viewers kindly subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell icon so you get notified each time a video drops on this uh, page and also do well to check our previous videos on comparative anatomy and surface anatomy of the upper limb today we'll be looking at tissue processing and their uh, examination let's get right into it tissue processing and examination the most common procedure used in histological research is the preparation of tissue sections or slices that can be studied with the electron uh, microscope because most tissues and organs are too thick they must be sliced to obtain thin translucent sections that are attached to glass slides for microscopic uh, examination however as a particular matter this is seldom feasible and artifacts distortions and loss of components due to the preparation process they are often uh, present the basic steps used in um, tissue preparation for microscopy is termed tissue processing so therefore tissue processing are the basic steps used in tissue preparation for microscopy tissue processing can also be defined as a procedure which needs to take place after gross examination between tissue fixation and the embedding and then sectioning of a paraffin blocks what are the steps involved in tissue processing the first step we have is the fix is fixation in, we do this fixation to avoid tissue digestion by enzymes present within the cells or bacteria to preserve cell and tissue structure pieces of organs begin to be treated as soon as possible after removal from the body the initial treatment which is fixation usually involves immersion in solutions of stabilizing or cross-linking compounds called fixatives because a fixative must fully diffuse through the tissues to preserve all cells tissues are usually cut into small fragments before fixation to facilitate penetration and better ensure tissue preservation intravascular perfusion of fixatives can be used with some organs or laboratory animals because the fixative in this case rapidly reaches the tissues through the blood vessels fixation is uh, improved one fixative widely used for tissue um, preparation is uh, formalin, a buffered isotonic solution of 37% formaldehyde. Both formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde, they are fixative, often used for electron uh, microscopy. They react with the, the amine groups of tissue proteins, thereby preventing their degradation. Glutaraldehyde it reinforces this fixing activity by being a dialdehyde capable of cross-linking proteins. This is all about the chemistry of uh, fixatives. I think we should have an idea of this. With the greater magnification and resolution of very small structures in the electron microscope, fixation must be done carefully to preserve or structural detail. Toward that end, a double fixation procedure using a buffered glutaraldehyde solution followed by immersion in buffered osmium tetrazide is a standard method to prepare tissue for such studies. This um, oxium tetrazide preserves and stains membrane lipids as well as uh, protein. The next step is uh, dehydration. As we all know, dehydration is the removal of water. So in dehydration, water is extracted from the fixed tissue by successive transfer through a graded series of ethanol using from 70% to 100% ethanol. Next step is clearing. Clearing consists of the removal of the dehydrant, which is ethanol, with a substance that will be miscible with the embedding media and the commonest clearing agent is tulin. Tissue placed in tulin, in tulin 1 and tulin 2 each are left for 30 minutes. Other clearing agents are xylene, the chloroform, paraffin, metal benzoate and the metal salicylate and citrus uh, fruits. The next stage is the infiltration stage. Tissue is then infiltrated with embedding agent like your molten paraffin wax in a beaker placed in hot hair for six to eight hours which replaces tulin then other infiltrating media are paraplus paraplus plus gelatin collidins epoxy resin for electron microscopy and acrylic resin for immunohistochemistry can also be used embedding and sectioning is the next stage the tissues are embedded in a solid medium to facilitate sectioning in order to cut very thin sections. Tissues must be infiltrated after fixation with embedding material 
that impart a rigid consistency to the tissue. Embedding materials include paraffin and plastic resins. The paraffin is used routinely for light microscopy, resins for both light and air, electron air microscopy. The paraffin embedding of tissue impregnation is preceded by dehydration and clearing. As the solvent infiltrates the tissues, they become very transparent and, and thereby undergoing a clearing. Then the tissues to be embedded with plastic resin are also dehydrated in ethanol and depending on the kind of resin used, subsequently infiltrated with plastic solvent. The ethanol or solvents are later placed by plastic solutions that harden with this addition of cross-linking polymerizers. Then plastic embedding avoids the higher temperatures needed for paraffin embedding, which helps avoid shrinkage and major distortion of the tissue. The next stage we have is the cryosectioning. In case of frozen section fixed or unfixed frozen tissues, they are sliced by using microtome maintained in a refrigerator in a refrigerator device known as the cryostat. This is a diagram of the, of the microtome used in tissue preparation. Then the next stage we have is the labeling stage. For indefinite storage of block and identification, numbers is written with Indian ink on a small piece of paper and attached to one side of the block slide where the tissue is being placed. That is that's the block we are talking about. That's where we label. Next stage is the water bathing. After sectioning, the section tissue is placed in warm water bath to help remove the wrinkles. The next stage is marking slide and numbering. The section tissues are picked up on glass microscope slides from water baths and placed in a hot air oven for 15 minutes to help the sections adhere to the slides. The slide is then numbered by non-removable ink. Then the next stage is the staining stage. Most cells and extracellular materials are completely colorless and to be studied microscopically, sections must typically be stained, that is to, to be dyed. You need to dye the sections. The methods of staining have been devised that not only make the various tissue components conspicuous but also permit distinctions to be made between them. Dyes stain tissue components more or less selectively, with many behaving like acidic or basic compounds and forming electrostatic linkages with ionizable radicals of molecules in tissues. Cell components such as nucleic acid with a net negative charge stain more readily with basic dyes and are termed basophilic while cationic components such as proteins with many ionized amino groups have affinity for acidic dyes and are termed acidophilic. Examples of basic dyes are tolidine blue, asian blue, methylene blue. Emartosilene behaves like a basic dye, staining basophilic tissue components. The main tissue components that ionize and react with basic dyes do so because of acids in their composition, that is their DNA, their RNA, and their glycoaminoglycans. Then acid dyes like eosin, orange, G, and acid fusin, they stain acidophilic components of tissue such as mitochondria, typically granules, and then collagen. Of all staining methods, the simple combination of hematoxylene and eosin is used most commonly. Hematoxylene produces a dark blue or purple color Staining DNA in the cell nucleus and other acidic structures such as RNA, which is portions of the cytoplasm, and the matrix of cartilage. The con the con in contrast, eosin stains other cytoplasmic components and collagen pink. Other dyes such as trichomes, e.g. E the Mallory stain, the Mason stain, they are used in more complex histologic procedures. The trichomes, besides showing the nuclear and cytoplasm, very well helps to distinguish extracellular tissue components better than H and E. The chemical basis of other staining procedures is more complicated than that of the electrostatic interactions underlying basophilia and acidophilia. DNA can be specifically identified and quantified in nuclei, in nuclei using the, the Ferrogen reaction in which deoxyribose sugars are hydrolyzed by mild hydrochloric acid followed by treatment with periodic acid skip which we known as which we, which is well known as past reagent. This past reaction is based on the transformation of one two glycol groups present in the sugars into aldehyde residues 
which then react to stiff radiant to produce a purple or magenta color. The polysaccharide constitutes a heterogeneous group in tissues, occurring either in a free state or bound to proteins and lipids. Because of their hexo sugar and content, many polysa polysaccharides can also be demonstrated by the past reaction. A very common free polysaccharide in animal cells is M glycogen, which can be demonstrated by past in liver, in liver, striated muscle, and other tissues where it accumulates. Lipid rich structures of cells are based are best revealed with lipid soluble dyes and avoiding the processing steps that remove lipids such as treatment with heat, organic solvents or paraffin. Typically, frozen sections are stained in alcohol solutions saturated with a lipophilic dye such as Sudan black which dissolves in lipid rich structures of cells. Specialized methods for localization of cholesterol, phospholipids and glycolipids are useful in diagnosis of metabolic diseases in which there are intracellular accumulations of these different lipids. In addition to staining tissues with dyes, metal impregnation techniques usually using solutions of silver salt are a common method of visualizing certain extracellular matrix fibers and specific cellular elements in nervous tissue. The whole procedure from fixation to observing a tissue in a microscope in a microscope may take from 12 hours to two and a half days depending on the size of the tissue. The fixative, the embedding medium and the method of staining the f okay um, let's repeat that the whole procedure from fixation to observing a tissue in a microscope may take from 12 hours to two and a half days depending on the size of the tissue, the fixative, the embedding medium, and the method of uh, staining. The final step before microscopic observation is mounting a protective glass cover sleeve on the slide with a clear adhesive. Thank you. This is all you need to know about tissue preparation and examination. Stay tuned, keep in touch, watch out for our next video. Like I said, Hit the notification bell so you get notified each time we drop a video on this page. Thank you for listening. See you next time.